Hey everyone, and welcome to the 10th part in cracking ML interviews. So, here is the problem. Explain batch normalization. Okay, so let's start with the beginning. Let's say that we have the following neural network. We have our input X, then three linear layers, each one with its own weight and bias, and in the end we get the output Y. Nothing too complicated. But now, let's say that we are this layer here the third layer. Well, from our perspective, all we know about this network is that we get as input A2 and output Y. And the problem here, if we use this configuration, is that because A2 depends on the previous parameters, it can shift quite often. So A2 can shift quite often. As the neural network learns things about our data. And this phenomenon is known as the internal covariate shift. And as a side note, I would like to emphasize that I seen some candidates refer to this phenomenon as the internal covariance shift. And I have to say that this is totally wrong. Because this term here covariance measures how two or more random variables vary together and it has nothing to do with this phenomenon that batch normalization tries to solve, which is about that the input distribution changes when it train the neural network. Okay, now coming back, how does batch normalization solve this problem? Well, it does it in two steps. The first step, so step one, is to normalize the input of the layer by extracting the mean of that batch and dividing by the standard deviation of that batch. So basically, let's say that Z2 is the output of this operation. So the batch normalization operation applied to A2 will be equal to A2 minus the mean of that batch divided by the standard deviation of that batch. And now, the input to our third layer will have a mean equal to 0 and a standard deviation equal to 1. Which means that this issue here, the internal covariate shift, will be drastically reduced. However, we usually don't want all our input layers to have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. But instead, we want them to have their own mean and standard deviation. We just want them to not shift when we train the neural network. So the next step in the batch normalization layer, so step two, is to multiply this output here, so Bn of A2, and actually I should rename this to only norm here, because this isn't actually the whole batch normalization layer, okay? So I have that the batch normalization will be equal to gamma multiplied with the output of the first step, so norm of A2, and then we add the parameter beta. And if we do that, then the input to this layer will have a mean equal to beta and a standard deviation equal to gamma. And here you have it, the two steps in the batch normalization layer together with the problem it tries to solve. Now, a very good follow-up to this question is so follow up would be how do you compute the mean and standard deviation during inference because for instance if you serve only one sample to the neural network then you can compute the mean and the standard deviation of that batch because it contains only one sample so what batch normalization Thus, to solve this problem during training is to compute a running average for the mean and standard deviation, similarly to momentum in gradient descent. So, for instance, our running mean would be equal to alpha, which is our momentum parameter, multiplied by the running mean plus 1 minus alpha multiplied by the mean of the current batch. And similarly, 
the running standard deviation would be equal to alpha multiplied by the running standard deviation plus 1 minus alpha multiplied by the standard deviation. And then we normalize the sample using these two values. So norm of x would be equal to x minus the running mean divided by the running standard deviation. And that's basically it for this video. I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.